We take a closer look at Myanmar, where a rebel coalition of armies appear to be making progress in their war against the ruling Myanmar junta. The military had seized power in a coup in 2021. The democratically elected parliament the military targeted scattered, with some legislators fleeing the countries and others remaining behind. They have been operating a parallel civilian government ever since, and some young supporters for democracy took up arms. Their efforts are finally paying off, it seems, with the fighters making gains on at least three major fronts across northern Myanmar. This is a fight that Myanmar's ruling military junta didn't see coming. These soldiers are part of what's known as the Three Brotherhood Alliance, a coalition of different ethnic armed groups who are now stretching Myanmar's ruling military forces across multiple fronts. In the last few weeks, they claim to have taken town after town in the north of the country, releasing videos showing their apparent progress as they claim control of key military outposts, weapons and captured territory they believe belongs to them. It's an operation that's become known by those involved as 1027, a reference to the date this coordinated fight back began. Initially focused in the northeastern Shan state, it's now grown as the biggest military challenge to Myanmar's junta since it seized power in 2021. With the opposition pro-democracy national unity government also joining the assault, much of which is happening in areas that border India and China. China is following closely the conflict in northern Myanmar and has been urging all parties to stop the fighting. Recently, some countries asked China for assistance. In a humanitarian spirit, we have facilitated their citizens' transit through China from northern Myanmar. The UN says more than 200,000 people have already been displaced by the fighting since the start of this offensive. With this recent footage giving a sense of the sheer number of people now trying to flee. And many more are likely to follow. With Myanmar's military dictatorship unlikely to concede easily in this fight, protracting an ever-growing conflict that now threatens the junta's ironclad grip on power. Joining us is Kyat Zha, spokesperson for the National Unity Government. That is the civilian government that was democratically elected in 2020. Thank you for joining the program. Uh, can you tell us what your government knows about where things stand on the fighting front? Yes, um, the, uh, our government, National Unity Government of Myanmar, is uh, coordinating with uh, all the EROs in the country. And then that's the recent military offensive against the uh, Myanmar military started on October 27 with the Three Brotherhood. So we are gaining, uh, we capture uh, about 160 military bases and then towns, uh, including the district level towns. So we are making headways. And then we are um, the, um, of, uh, attacking the military, military um, from the different, all over the country and staging the coordinated attacks. You are up against a military that has been in power for decades. Uh, making inroads in border areas is one thing, but do you think it's possible to, for example, fight all the way to the capital one day and topple the junta? Oh, definitely. This is the people power. This is the people revolution. Um, the military people thought that, well, some people may thought the military cannot be defeated, but this uh, recent military offensive, coordinated offensive against the military, is, show, is a showcase of the unity, strength, and coordinated attack of this um, the revolutionary forces. And at the same time, it shows the weakened state of the military. They are collapsing. They are demoralizing. 
and the day of surrendering. I want to switch to looking at the civilian aspect. Uh, your government is running in parallel with the military authority. Uh, just briefly explain how that works. Where do you administer? Yeah. What are you trying to do? Yeah, so, um, military losing grounds and that they can control, their absolute control areas is about, about uh, one eighth of the country. And then uh, about almost 60% of the country's territories are controlled by NUG and the resistance forces. And there are many areas on top of the many areas are competing. So military control only basically only the big cities, that even the big cities are the, they lost control and then we, we are winning. And at the, since the government uh, is formed and since we gained the territories, we formed the people's administration on the ground. Um, or right now, NUG, set up the uh, more than 170 well, administration in more than 170 townships across Myanmar. And then ethnic states also, they have the, the own the state administration um, bodies, for example, in Karani State, the uh, IEC, inter, uh, in, <clears throat> Interim Executive Council. So those are the ones that we are taking over the uh, at, uh, the governmental services and administ providing the administrative and then the restoring the law and order and then also the security of the people. So those are the ones that we are doing, uh, still the still station the revolution against the military to end the military, military, military dictatorship in Myanmar once for all. Your government was democratically elected. It is legitimate, but the international community has not recognized you. No other country recognizes you. Why do you think that is and what would you like to see? Yeah, uh, what we be hearing is that the, uh, most government uh, don't recognize uh, uh, recognize the state, not the government. But uh, many governments are engaging with us, and uh, we are actively engaging with the uh, um, the international community. And uh, we've been uh, we are uh, we are thankful for those countries that who engage in and providing the political and diplomatic st support for us. So yes, you are right that we are the democratically elected legitimate government of Myanmar and that should be recognized as a lawful, legitimate government. That's why we are um, we are uh, requesting and urging the, uh, the international community. Kia ta, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you, thank you. And we turn to Anna Plunkett of King's College London's War Studies Department for more. Anna, thank you for joining uh, the program. The National Unity Government spokesperson we just talked to seems confident uh, these recent military victories could be the beginning of the end uh, for the military junta. What's your observation? I can definitely see why they are so positive. I think when we look at what's happened over the past few few weeks since the 10th of uh, 27th of October, what we can see is you know, very significant military victories that we haven't seen before since independence in Myanmar. So there is a massive shift and this is a big turning point in the conflict, um, but I think it's too early to tell whether that will be able to be sustained and withheld um, by the military forces that have taken them and whether that means really success for the national unity government at this time. What is China's role in all this? So I think it's a very interesting one. China's been known to very much hedge its position between the rebel groups in Myanmar's borderlands that have controlled a lot of the areas between the central parts of Myanmar that are controlled by the hunter and China for a very long time. You know, this is an area that's been in conflict since independence independence for Myanmar, um, but has also worked very closely with the central government and the hunter um, since independence. So they've signed a lot of memorandums and they have a lot of investments in Myanmar. And what we can see over the last few months is a big frustration from the Chinese government over the um, illegal scam networks that have been working through the borderlands in Myanmar, creating significant problems for central China. So right now, China seems to be Considering, reconsidering its support of the hunter and this hedging policy and possibly moving towards a support of the rebel movement or the NUG, um, which is a big threat to the hunter, as we can see from the fact that they have now started to try and close down these networks and hand over scammers to the Chinese government in the last few days. 
Now, the rebellion naturally wants to present itself as a united front, but some of these ethnic minority armies were fighting each other or, or the central government, and they are now fighting alongside each other. How long can this coalition hold? Evidence from Myanmar, I think, really suggests that this is this is will be temporary. Um, this alliance seems to be working very well right now, and it is significantly leading to these big gains. As we've seen, the Brotherhood Alliance was able to succeed very well in Shan and Sagan region, um, and it's now been joined by the KAA. And we've seen similar kind of attacks being pulled in Kareni and KR State. So. In that regard, this alliance is working very effectively in terms of countering military offensives right now. But experience is of alliances in Myanmar previously have highlighted that these are very short term agreements in regards to the ceasefire, in regards to um, other previous alliances between rebel groups. These groups have very different aims and objectives, and there are big concerns about you know, the idea of federation or ethnic unity in Myanmar. And so I think if they're able to overcome that, then this could be a significant move forward. But there's a lot of obstacles in the way, a lot of historical grievances that make this kind of alliance very hard for groups to sustain. Now, the trigger for this fighting, at least the most recent incident, was the fact the military ignored the results of an election and ejected the democratically elected legislature. Uh, to what extent, though, would it be accurate at this point to describe this as a pro-democratic rebellion? Well, I think when we look at the leadership and how much legitimacy and support the NUG have on the local level, I think we can definitely say that there is a very strong pro-democracy element um, to this movement. And I think to try and deny that would be to misunderstand what's happening in Myanmar right now. Um, but I think we need to be honest about the context it's occurring within and the fact that there are a lot of rebel groups that have been fighting for independence and succession from Myanmar for a very long time. And so, yes, it can be pro-democratic, but there is also a lot of successionist movements that are involved in this. Anna Plunkett, thank you so much for joining us.